Hey everyone, today on Real Money, I have an open, honest, intimate, and vulnerable conversation with my husband. Valentine's Day is around the corner, and I thought I'd talk all things love and money and give you a behind the scenes of what's going on in our lives, the things that are on our hearts. And Jimmy's an amazing man, and I thought that everybody could benefit from getting to know him and what is in his heart and sharing what men are really going through today and how we as men and women on this planet can work together to have happier, healthy, happier, healthier, more loving lives together. Tune in, listen to some little nuggets from Jimmy, and he's going to share some pretty vulnerable things about me too. And I'm so grateful that you're here. Hey. Yeah. It's a year later. Yep. You were on the show a year ago. Oh, it's been a year? Yeah. Oh. Did you know? No. <laughs> well, you're going to know. Okay. Last that our first our episode together last year was one of the most listened to and it's still the one that people share the most and tell me that they loved the most. Was cool. getting to know you. Cool. Yeah. So I I do this all the time, but everybody wants to know the man behind the show. Man behind the mirror. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. Yeah. So for newcomers, so this is going to be on YouTube. Our last show, I think if you're watching this, might be on the on, my, on YouTube. And I know for sure that this one's going to be on YouTube. So let's take the list. Let's take our audience, the listeners, on a journey of how we met. Hello. Hello. Are you guys out there? <laughs> is, there is anybody out there? Hello. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you this way. So w- my friend Shane, we were at a luncheon a couple weeks ago, and she's our attorney, a really good friend of ours. Shout out to Shane Young. And she was talking about how this year she wants to really focus on being good instead of nice. And she said that her husband, Charles, are high school sweethearts, that Charles is a really good man. He's not the nicest man, but he's a really good man. And it made me think that that's exactly how I feel about you, too. That, and I've told you this before, that you're a really good man, and that's why I married you. But that doesn't mean that you're the nicest man. That doesn't mean that you're, you know, nice to everyone or um, I guess what would be another way of saying that? You have, you have healthy boundaries with people, I think. Okay. I think I think so. Okay. So let's talk about how we met. Okay. I want, I want you to tell your side of the story first. So how we met. So we were both doing emotional intelligence classes. I've already graduated where I was going through. Was I still going through? I can't remember. No, you had graduated. Already graduated. So we're doing a relationship class at this, this, this center. And you were still currently married to your ex-husband. And we met there. I remember we were doing some kind of stretch. We had to do this thing and skit. Yeah. Some skit. You took your shirt off and you're just standing in your bra. I'm like, damn, (laughs) she's hot. And then. We always just stayed connected through the years past. I think it was like seven years then till we reconnected again, like started dating. But, you know, we always like talked in every blue moon and Facebooked or whatever, and then see each other through business or work or whatever. Mm-hmm. And through the center, I could so just stay, kind of stay connected. And then kind of seen you on Easter. You came to church and we mm-hmm. kind of reconnected and called because you're going through something at that time. And yeah, mm-hmm. helped you out and told you. I want to throw my hat in the ring if you're looking to date. And well, you did. And I hooked you. Yeah. And then pretty much, I think three weeks into talking, I told you I was going to marry you. And you asked a lot of questions, like a lot, <laughs> a lot of questions. She would text all freaking day long. Like, what about this? Do you like this? Do you want to do that? Do you do that? But that's her. She's very, talks a lot. And I, I'm very not a talker, so. But yeah, well, that's how I remember. What was it? Because I was, I was maybe not on the outside looking in, but I felt like at that time when we had met, I was just putting my life back together, literally. Um, from when we met, we met at church mm-hmm. in like 2018, and I felt like I had nothing really. I, I, you know, went through the divorce, was putting myself back together emotionally, had just started my company, had just moved twice in the same year. And I felt like I was very vulnerable when we met, but what was it? I can hear your hearing aids ringing. I can hear. (laughs) Do you want to turn that off? I don't know how to turn them off. Oh no. Okay. His phone's ringing, but anyway. Sorry. That's okay. I just felt like I was in a really vulnerable position 
and you made it okay and you made it safe for me just to be where I was at. And I thought we were just friends. It took me a minute to realize that you were actually interested in me. And I get a lot of questions from clients, single clients. I go on single shows talking about being single, all of that. But for you, what was it about me that you knew that I was going to be the the woman that you wanted to marry? And, and I'm your second marriage. Yes. So what? how I knew, I just knew we were on a different level of being able to communicate because we both have kind of the same tools and you've dived further into the toolbox in a mm-hmm. sense now, but we both had the same tools and we just got along and it just, um, other than you being smoking hot, you know, was the plus, but no, we connected. We just had a great connection and I knew we were able to communicate and talk and uh, I don't know. Yeah. There wasn't like something was like, oh, but Mm-mm. no, it just, it just, it felt right. Mm-hmm. It did feel right. It, it shocked the hell out of me. I know. Yeah. This is a hard sell. You you say that, but I've had so many before we were before you and I were together. I've had women, and you know, one of my friends was into you. Like Jimmy's a catch. Um, where I think you are, I think you are well, a catch. You. you think I don't? For me, it, I was really shocked that I would be your type. I don't know what I what I had in my head is being your type. But what do you think my, my, my type was? Tall, blonde, like hmm, okay. volleyball. Like I don't know. Okay. Anyway, I just had like a Cali girl or something, but okay. I didn't know you that that well. All right. Anyway, we get a lot of I get a lot of questions from clients and we talk a lot about being single and like different checklists. You know, women have different checklists of how the guy that they're looking for. And for you and me, what stood out the most for me was that you were stable. And for a lot of women, I think that's really, really important is that you got your shit together. 840 credit. Score. Yeah, eight fifty. Is it eight fifty? Eight fifty, y'all. <laughs> Which I didn't know at the time when we were dating, um, but it really surprised me that we were so compatible. And now, five years, we're going to be married. Five years in March, in a month. Oh, we've do, we've done a nickel. A nickel. <laughs> married for a nickel. All right. <laughs> Is there a certain anniversary gift for that? I don't know. You I'm not good at that stuff. Is it a nickel? I don't know. I don't Is know. It? I don't know. Yeah, what we'll to look at <clears throat> Google it or something. Yeah, and it's it's for me. I can say without a doubt, we've had a lot of highs and lows, but mm-hmm. this has been the best five years of my life. Thank you. I would say that, and there was COVID mixed into all that crap yeah. too. So, no, yeah, that was rough. Let's talk about blue collar life for a minute. Okay. So, being a money coach, a lot of people wouldn't connect that. I come from blue collared roots and for you, you have a, a working background. Like yeah. you're a working man. Will you help the listener know what you like, what growing up was for you and what life was like growing up for you? As far as what working? Just in general. Like, well, you know, like what you're in construction now, you're in asphalt paving now, but what was life like for you growing up and then coming into your own? You, and from what I know, you were on your own a lot. Yeah. But that was a generation though. Like we were, what generation are we? Gen X. Gen X. Like we were just left alone. Like I, mm-hmm. during the summer you were at home, no matter, I think from third grade on, we were at home alone. And my dad was kind of a rough man. And like we had to prune trees and do all that stuff during the summer breaks where we could go outside and play. And I remember I was what, in sixth grade or something like that. I changed out the water heater. Cause I was told to change out the water heater. Uh, just it was just part of life. I mean, just that's why we're a tough generation and not as tough as like our grandfathers, you know what I mean? Like the World War II guys and all the vets like that. But yeah, I mean, they were tougher than we are, but yeah, it was just, we're just a tougher generation mm-hmm. because we were just left alone. We had to figure it out on our own. We didn't have Google. We no, had, we didn't. Remember the encyclopedias they'd sell you had like a whole bookshelf full of encyclopedias and it was like, but yeah, we didn't look, no, I didn't look that shit up. And it was mm-hmm. yeah, just, you found out the hard way. I think that's a good way of putting it. We found out the hard way. No. And then we are we are surrounded by parents who don't want our kids to learn the hard way. And, but you and I are raising our kids in a lot of ways to learn their own lessons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've learned more from failing than I have ever won from, you know, winning or whatever. Or yeah. I've learned more. Blah, 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 blah. I've learned more from losing than I ever have from winning. I have too. I have too. I, we have that in common too. Yep. Um, what are you seeing in with your guys and their their relationships and their money. What are they going through right now? I t- cuz I talk a lot about women on the show 
And recently, this is a new year, new me. I've learned a lot of things in the last couple of years. I've been wanting to connect women and men together because I don't think that it serves us to be against each other in any conversation. What are you seeing your guys going through financially? I know like in construction, a lot of construction, you get paid weekly. And there are struggles that go with that. What are some things that you've seen or are seeing right now? I mean, fortunately for my guys, I mean, they all make great money. They make a good living for themselves. I mean, we don't really talk financing a lot. I mean, I don't see my guys like being from Vegas and been a boss for so long at Foreman, whatever. We've had guys get paid on Thursday and they're broke by Friday because, mm-hmm. you know, Vegas, it's either, you know, the drugs, the drinking, the, the casinos, the strip clubs and all that. They'll suck your money. They could care less. You know what I mean? But, you know, I just, I got my guys make gr- a great living. They work their ass off for it. And some are married, some are single. I think a lot of them get caught up in uh, keeping up with the Joneses, you know, needing mm-hmm. these brand new trucks and all that stuff. And that don't make sense to me. It's, I did, when I was younger too, you know, I wanted the cool trucks, the big lifted trucks and all that. But, you know, now trucks are $90,000 for a decent truck. And that's just crazy to me. I don't need, you know, people be like, I'm broke, but you're driving around in a hundred thousand dollar pickup. You know, I think people can make better decisions in yourself and you know, you don't need that hundred thousand dollar truck. And my truck's damn near 10 years old. So. Yeah. But it's got low miles. Yeah. It's got low miles. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice truck though. You keep it up. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is some of, what are some of the things that you've learned? So you're 46. I think we did the math. You're, yeah. doing, you're 46. Ah. What are some of the things that you've learned from us being together when it comes to money? That I have no control over it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Victim. I have an allowance. <laughs> you gave control over. No, absolutely. No, I absolutely <laughs> gave control. When you got married, you asked like, well, hey, can you, do you mind if I take over the financing? I'm like, well, why would I let you take over the financing? What you do for a living? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't in the best financial spot. I mean, I think when. You got, we got married. I mean, I was making great money, but I was pot to piss in. I had IRA and stuff like that, but no, no, it's no, I don't complain. What are some of the things that you've learned that are working for, that you think are working for us? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> what have Nothing. I learned? No, what? cause you handle it. I mean, I, do. I know you got it handled and I trust you in that. And a lot of people be like, how do you not know what's going on with your money? I'm like, well, I love and trust my wife. Why would I be worried about it? It's mm-hmm. no different than you, me, you know, trust me with Connor. You know what I mean? Like, and I trust you with range and it, there's just a trust there. And if you're, I guess if you wanted to screw me and take everything I got, well, I don't even know the passwords really to get onto anything. So I, I don't know. It's just trust. And yeah. Uh, you got it. Yeah. I mean, well, hopefully everything that you're t- selling all these people is true because, you know, mm-hmm. I, I got no clue what's going on. But you do have access to everything if yes. you want it. And you give me a spreadsheet. And I you do. mean spreadsheets don't work out too well. <laughs> That's all the people in the office. They're like, give Jimmy a spreadsheet and they just laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, though, in, in relationships, there's one person that runs it. And there's one person that manages it and the other person supports it. And I will say that you do a really good job of supporting the systems that we have in place. Um, One thing that I do talk about a lot is having a spending account and you have your own spending account, which you love so much. I love allowance. You love it so much. Road ass man has an allowance. But you got money in savings. Oh, yes. I think. I don't know. You you do. Okay. (laughs) So you keep telling me. We do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so she says, money and savings. I think trust is a big part, though. Yes, it's absolutely trust. It's got to be trust. I know for me, I take that really seriously, um, that I know you trust me and that I do my best to honor what it is that we say that we want together and the things that we're working toward. And that makes a big difference. So thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because on the other side, I've been in relationships where there is no trust or in conversations with couples that where there is no trust, and that never feels good. That's horrible. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. Um, so, yeah, I think trust is a huge a huge piece of it. Why would you be in a relationship with somebody if you didn't trust them? It's a great question. People do it every day. No, that makes no sense to me. I know. They do it all the time. Like, why be miserable? If you don't trust somebody 100%, like, why would you be married to them? I think trust is a loaded conversation. Hmm? 
I think someone, you might want to trust somebody that doesn't necessarily mean that you do trust them. Yeah. Right? Yep. I know in my, with my first marriage, I wanted to trust him. I didn't fully trust him, but even unconsciously, it was an unconscious thing. So like we got in fights where he'd be gone for hours at a time and no, like nothing to say where he was. And so I'm in my 20s at this point. This is even before Connor was born, but then I'm like checking his phone because I don't trust him. No. But I want to trust him. No. But that's different. Wanting to trust somebody and trusting somebody, not the same thing. Right? No. Did you have full trust in your first marriage? No. Absolutely not. No. And that's, you know, and you have to learn from your mistakes. And what I did in that first marriage, I won't do in my second with you. What'd you learn? It's not, you know, it's not worth being right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. And we've never really, um, we we have, how do we say, we don't have, we don't have arguments. We don't fight. We've maybe a couple times. <laughs> but we, but we did. Kids. What do you not, you know, but we don't have, we don't fight over it though. Mm-hmm. Like we have more conversations about it. It's not, mm-hmm. a, we disagree. There you go. We agree to disagree kind of thing. Uh, but it's not worth being right. And you know, it's, you know, it's like the right and wrong game. And if you, you take an ax to a tree long enough, it's going to, the tree's going to fall. And I took to the ax to treat them because I wanted to be right. And every time you're right, you, you be live with somebody. Yeah. And it's not worth being right. Nothing's worth being right. There's nothing I want to prove you wrong over. No. It's like, I'll never gamble. Like I don't gamble. Like we don't bet. Like I bet you a dollar that the camera's going to fall over whatever. No. Cause I don't want a bet against you. I don't want to see you lose. And I don't want to, mm. anybody I care about and love, I don't want to, I'll never gamble against. I'll never bet, you know, a gentleman's bet. I'm like, no, I don't want to see you fail. I don't want to see you fail. I don't want to fail unless nobody I love fail. Yeah. Would your divorce teach you? What did it teach me? Exactly that. It's mm-hmm. but it took a lot of work to get to that point. Like <clears throat> if I would have had the tools I had now, I did the best I can. I I did the best I could, sorry, mm-hmm. in my marriage with her. And unfortunately it wasn't enough. And that sucks. And I think if I would have had the tools I have now, it might have worked. Who knows? I mean, it's in the past, the past, mm-hmm. the past. But I had to go through that heartache and everything, like the divorce and all the crap we went through and raising my son on my own for a while, a long time with me and my mom. And But I had to go through that to get you. So I think God had, God had a plan in that. I had to go through that hurt to get to you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't think that I would have been ready for, I don't think that we would have been ready for each other in our 20s or even in our early 30s. I know I had to, I had a lot of growing up to do and my divorce taught me a lot about myself. It was a big mirror in my face about who I was being. Um, And you're such a strong man. I don't think that I could have handled that. I think we would have fought a lot because I wasn't in a place in my life where I wanted to, was ready to surrender until literally God put me on my knees before I met you, not, not, I mean, maybe like May and we, we started dating in like July, but it was May where I was like on my knees. Finally, God was like, listen to me, Lisa, you can't do it your way. It's not working. And I don't think it was until that happened for me that I was ready to be able to embrace being with a strong man and surrender to that. It's, Control is a huge thing. I mean, you can't control anything about yourself and truly, you know, God has a plan for us. What really can we control us the way we are now and the actions and how we talk to people and how we react to things. And if you have a a disagreement with somebody, you know, we control ourselves and not the other person. So why Mm -hmm. even try to control them? Uh, It's not worth it. I control me. Why? No. Surrender. Ugh. And and it's hard. It is. And that's being married is surrendering and it's mm-hmm. compromise. And yes, as a guy, sometimes it sucks. And I can imagine on the other side of the spectrum for you, it sucks. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say it sucks, but it's it's tough. Mm-hmm. And my ego, my pride wants to get in the way, but I have to point, you have to stop, take a second and okay, it's not worth it. Again, mm-hmm. it's not worth me being right. I don't want to be right. No. Oh. 
No, I want to be married. I want, uh, yeah, I'd rather be married than be right. That's a good question out there is, would you rather be right or be married? And that's something that Jimmy and I talk about all mm-hmm. the time. And we talk about with other couples is being right is not the way to win, I think, in relationships. Sometimes it's just easier to say yes, babe. Yeah. Nope. Yep. Because you know I got it. Nope, yep, I know you do. You know, most of the time I do. <laughs> Most of the time. Um, we had, well, I talked about this on my last podcast with the, one of the guests that I had, and I brought, I brought it up with him, and I want to bring it up with you because I think it's really important. And you're really, you're really a really vulnerable man, which mm-hmm. I love, and open and honest. And at breakfast a couple weeks ago, you said that it's no one gives a shit about men. No. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm talking about men, not, yeah. not what I mean, men, I'm talking about men that are doing something, men that are productive members of society. They are active in their families. They are active in their communities. Like I'm talking men, not mm-hmm. baby daddies, not people that leave their kids, people that cheat on their wives like i'm talking what fucking men are Mm -hmm. and men are in my opinion we're here to serve we're here to serve our countries we're here to serve our communities we're here to serve our churches we're here to serve our our houses we're here to uh, provide for people and that's what it's always been i mean look only men can sign up for the draft you know i mean Mm -hmm. we are almost a commodity and we're meant to work in whatever fashion of work that that a man does. And we're in most marriages, you know, it's like you're the provider and you have to be the provider and whatever it takes to provide, you got to provide. And if not, and if you don't provide, she'll find somebody else that can. Mm -hmm. And she'll spit you out and throw you to the side and get you for child support and marry another dude. And you're still paying child support and you're still providing. I think child support is a hundred percent bullshit. If you ask my opinion. Yeah. Now, if the dude's a deadbeat dad, hey, I get it. Absolutely, I get that. But on a woman's end, too, like, you can't tell me it takes two grand a month to raise a kid just because I make more money than she does. Yeah, because that's what happened to you, right? Yeah. That you felt like you were, that it was, un, you were unfairly treated. And that's in your the men in the court system. I mean, yeah. it's... it's yeah, it don't matter. I made more money than she did. Mm-hmm. I had my son 90% of the time. Mm-hmm. And I still had to pay child support. Yeah. And the courts went to court over it. Yeah. I got taken to court for more child support. And thankfully, they didn't give her more. But I mean, I had my kid 90% of the time and they wanted, she wanted more child support. What would you want to see change about that? For, I mean, yes, the man's the provider and women are coming up financially and yes. in business and in politics and all over the planet women are rising and i'm grateful to be a part of that what would you want to see happen for men as women continue to rise make it fair mm. i mean I, just make it fair like it's it's not fair mm-hmm. i mean for and this goes both the way of the spectrum you know what i mean but if you want to say, like, take your kid, say you you have a deadbeat wife, mom, or whatever, like, she has to be a drug addict and go into jail every time so you can even try to get custody of your kid. It, it, it's not fair for nobody. I mean, mm-hmm. I got a buddy going through it now. Like, his, his kid's in another state, and she's getting thrown in and out of jail, and he's trying to get the kid to Vegas where he's got a stable home, and he's remarried and, you know, got kids, and, like, he can't. Mm-hmm. And imagine what that kid's going to turn out. Like, it sucks. Yeah, it does. And we need stability in homes. And it doesn't, and if you're, hey, you're a single mom, I get it. It ain't hard. I was a single dad. It's tough. It's hard. But put on your boots, go to work, you know, figure mm-hmm. it out. Mm-hmm. You know, things get put away. You don't need new clothes and, you know, whatever monetary bullshit you think you need. You know, as long as the kid's got a good, stable home, it sucks that they don't have a parent. We need more men to step up. Or men to be accountable. I get it. I get it. I hear you. I think that that's true for all of us is if we want more stable homes, we all need to step up. Yeah. 
and figure out our finances. Yep. It's a big part of it. It's a huge part of it. That's why I know nothing that happens. So we can't fight over finances. Except I get an allowance. <laughs> yeah. It's taking a toll on men, though. No, it does. Like I said, it's, it's a fight. Every day's a fight. Yeah. And men, a girl can get another one. Yeah. And we're a commodity. We're here to work and provide. Right. Right. I've had conversations with male clients where that's happened, where something happens in the relationship and he loses his job or what, you know, in the, in the real, um, real estate burst, people lost homes and mm -hmm. all of that. And, um, there's a lot of work for us to do men and women absolutely on our mindset, really on our mindset of like who, whose job is it? And I think it's time. I think it's time for us to, as men and women to have this conversation together to say it's both our jobs. Yep. I know for me, when my ex-husband was in and out of work, for a long time, I pointed my finger at him. And that was my own mindset. I grew up with a stay-at-home mom. My dad worked. And I left my job to stay home with Connor. And when he couldn't provide and he couldn't find work, I kept pointing my finger at him, pointing my finger at him. What are you going to do? How are you going to fix it? And it wasn't until I realized I got to go back to work. I got to figure this out. I got to make this happen for me that my life turned around when that when I stood up and took that responsibility for myself. And I don't think that that I don't think that I would have done that if. You had to. I had to. Yeah. I had to. But it I, I realize now the pointing the finger in that relationship wasn't working. No, it never works. Yeah, it wasn't working. He had to fix himself and figure stuff out for himself, but that I had to stand up and go, okay, I'm going to I'm going to figure this out for myself. Yeah. And as we have more women who have access to more money and more financial power and more ownership, I hope that we can come together and say, you know, this is a this isn't just on men. And it's just not on women to figure this out. We have to figure this out together. I really do. Because it hurts my heart to hear you say that. Because I don't think I don't think a lot of women feel like that deep down inside. But that's maybe what we're projecting out to men. It's. No matter how hard my day gets or emotionally, physically or whatever, I know I still gotta go do it again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And when I come home, I have to be a dad. I have to be a husband. And my emotions, my feelings get thrown out the freaking window because I still got to provide for my family. Mm -hmm. And as men, we're taught to stuff that stuff in. And I, now I know it's okay to talk about it and stuff like that. And we have conversations about it, but it's hard. Mm -hmm. Like it's, and men really need to tap into vulnerability a lot more too. And hey, I'm hurting. I need help. Mm -hmm. And this is why men are killing themselves left and right. And women are too. You know what I mean? It's just, it sucks. Mm -hmm. Life is, for lack of better, life is fucking hard. And it's okay to ask for help. And you'll get through it. It's, everything is temporary. Everything is temporary. You'll get through it. A, a year from now, is it really going to matter? What you're going through today, is it really going to matter a year from now? What are some of the things that you did to be able to get through it? Well, going through all of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, you have to go through life is hard, but you have to go through struggles. You mm -hmm. have to go through trials. You have to go through hard times to get to the good times. And it's just part of it. It's yeah. But just, what helped you? What helped me is, I mean, for one, finding my faith mm -hmm. and knowing that I'm not in control and quit trying to control what I can't control. What helped me is finding tools and learn how to deal with things. It's not, you're supposed to feel the way you feel no matter what it is. From anger, I was just having this conversation at work. Whether it's anger, it's uh, sorrow, it's joy, it's happiness, whatever, blah, blah, blah. All feelings are beautiful. Even it's even anger and, and, and sorrow and joy, you know, they're all beautiful feelings. But learn what the trigger is. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. It's not that you're you're sad it's, or you're happy or you're mad. It's find out what the trigger is. That's what you got to figure out. It's not the, the feelings. Feelings are beautiful. Even the, 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 the bad ones, the bad ones, in a sense, they're a beautiful feeling. Mm -hmm. You've taught me how to feel more. Okay, good. <laughs> as much as I hate it. Yeah. Ah. 
Yeah, I cry a lot more than you do. You do. Yes. You and when do. you cry, you get really high pitched. I know. Yes. <laughs> it is what it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. I got to like let it out first. And then once I let it out, I can talk again. Yeah. But it's it's not easy to it's not easy to let it out. But you, you make me feel safe to do that. So why is it easy to let it out? Why isn't it easy? Mm -hmm. I think for me, for a long time, I felt like if I let it out, I was going to fall apart. Because my emotions there, I've I learned, especially in this last year, that if I just let myself feel it in 90 seconds, it moves and then it mm -hmm. moves and it moves. But it felt so heavy for so long. I felt like if I allowed myself to break down, that I was just going to fall apart and lose everything. It felt like I had to hold it together for so long. Um, so realizing that I'm safe with you and realizing that you're not going to judge me or make me feel bad or wrong for it. And then just knowing that it'll pass if I just let myself feel it. It won't last that no, long. Nothing lasts forever. It doesn't feel that way all the time, though, no. I think, for a lot of people. For me, that was the truth. It didn't feel that way all the time. Nothing lasts forever. I know. It's true. Nothing. Nope. If you're going through it, it's a, it'll pass through. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if you don't know God, trust me, you should. Yep. Yep. But, that was a big lesson for me, too. Yeah. So you you played a song for me yesterday. And it's, um, I had seen it, I'd seen the, it's Dax and Darius Rucker do this on Instagram. For, uh, oh, I had seen it like there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you played it for me yesterday. Um, and it's a, it's a real, it's a beautiful song. And I think it's, it's speaking into that pain that men are feeling today. And I want to share a few of the lyrics and then follow up with a conversation to any woman who's watching this who has a man in her life, her son, her father, her husband, best friend, whoever it is, to talk about what we can do as women to better support our men. Because for me, what uh, Twitch, remember Twitch the dancer? Yeah. He was himself. on Ellen. Yeah. He, he killed himself. And from the outside looking in, no one no. saw it coming. No one. And that's happening so much today. And in younger men, too, I know with range, we've had our own challenges with nope. mental health in eighth grade. And um, I want to follow up with a conversation of what women can do to, one, we can support each other, women, and we'll talk about that, but also what we can do to support our men. I think that'll be important to, to lean into. But um, we'll post this in the show notes, Cree, the, the song by Dax. But it says, I can't hide myself. I don't expect you to understand. I just hope I... I can explain what it's like to be a man. It's a lonely road and they don't care about what you know. It's not about how you feel, but what you provide inside that home. And that is, that it's so interesting because for the women that I work with and all the conversations I've had with women is that we do want our men to provide for us. We have been taught that that's your job, but it doesn't have to be your only job. Right? What would help with that? What does help with that? Well, okay. So, what helps for me is having someone I can talk to, mm -hmm. and that's you. Like, you, if I'm having a hard day and a vulnerable day, like I'm crying or whatever, you, you're there to talk to. And you're not a person when I get home and you just dump on me. Like, the boys, the, blah, blah, blah. The boys, this, the house is there. This is broken. Go fix this. You know what I mean? You don't do that. Like, I've always, in my first marriage, it was always like, can I poop, please? Like, can I come home and have a poop? And then we can talk. Like, give me that 10 minutes. And it's like, and with anybody, you get cut off on the road. You Road rage and somebody cuts mm -hmm. you off. You don't know what that person's going through that's cutting you off. Mm -hmm. You don't know if that person is going to the hospital because his wife just got in a car accident or his kid got hurt. Like, you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like, is having support and men to know that there's people there i mean like i mean suicide is definitely not the freaking answer and i'm tired of going to funerals if somebody kill himself it's just a permanent solution to a temporary problem and it's stupid but yeah and kids man it's scary like just went to that kid's church funeral was it six months ago like 
killed himself. So senseless. Like, yeah. but men were told we got to be tough and we can't be vulnerable, but we can. And it's okay. Like, I don't want my boys to know that it's not okay to cry. And there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's, it's okay. And it's okay to have a bad day. But to, for a man, it don't matter how bad the day is. You got to go back to work tomorrow. Yeah. Don't matter if you're having a bad day now. You got to, you got to power through and get it through. The job's got to get done. Yeah. Yep. I know one of the ways that I've been able to help myself in helping you with that is I have my own support system where you're not my only support system. Yes. So I have my weekly, bi-weekly walks with walks Gail. Gail. Yeah. And you'll ask me, you'll, you'll, you'll tell that I'm like pent up about yeah. something and you'll say, have you, when's the last time you walked with Gail? Yeah. Like, that's my therapy. Mm -hmm. That's my time. So she and I get together and we talk for two hours and we walk and we work it out. And then you're not my only person in, in marriages. I think sometimes that, that does happen, actually. Same-sex marriage is the same thing, is that you just, they, you only rely on each other. And yes, I rely on you for things, but I've also got my own network of people that I turn to and my coaches that has made a difference that I can then be present and available for you. And knowing what you need helps me too. Knowing that you want to come home and decompress, even though I want to talk. Yes. <laughs> we have our couch time and we don't talk, but that's your decompression time. And that's really helped us too, I think. And it's important, I feel, that everybody makes that place open for your friends. Like, again, males, like girls, yeah, 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 they're always chatty or whatever. But, but like, how does that go again? Yeah, 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 they're always yapping. But, you know, guys, like, leave an open space with your male friends, any friend. It doesn't matter, male or female. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But, like, hey, it's okay. Like, we can talk about things, and mm -hmm. we can cry on each other's shoulder. Like, I was just having a conversation with a buddy that was, you know, talking through stuff, and he was crying. Like, and that's a great place to be. And to be able to – people do that with me, it's awesome. But we need to be that way with everybody, and everybody needs to be that way with each other. I mean, like, the, what is it? The world needs love, and that's it. That's it. More connection. Yeah, more connection. And have conversations if you're a leader at your job or your life, whatever. Have conversations with men. Like, hey, bro, if you ever need anything, I'm here. And mm -hmm. it's, but it's not a bullshit if you need anything, I'm here. Yeah. And that's why, you know, you make fun of me. I don't like talking to people, especially, you know, people at the grocery store, because I'm all in. Yeah. If I'm friends with someone, they call me, they need help. I'll go give them, I'll help them. And in my opinion, that's what men do or men are supposed to do and humans are supposed to do for each other. And that's why I kind of resisted the people because I'm like, I don't want to go all in. I don't have time to go all in. But mm -hmm. if I do, here we go. That's your calling. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> it really is. Blah, 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 blah. I love that. Uh, we, we tease, but it's true that with our teenage boys, so we're raising two, 13 and 16, and that they're men in training. Yep. And that's been hard for me. You. And I'm sure you know, like me relinquishing that kind of control, number one, and then two, realizing that I I can raise boys to the best of my ability, but I've needed you to teach them how to be men. Mm -hmm. And that isn't always easy for me, but it's also so necessary for me to be like, here you go. Oh, and thank you. And Connor Connor said that the other day. He's like, I needed a I needed a, a male role model in my life. And I didn't like it at first. I no. didn't like the boundaries and the crying and the the conversations, but he get it he gets it now. And I know that they're gonna be better because of it. Because of you and the courage that you've had to work on yourself too. And I think that's an important part that if we wanna elevate in life, we wanna elevate in relationships, we wanna elevate financially, we wanna elevate in our business, we wanna elevate however, we've gotta work on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And for me, it started at the same time it started for you going through our emotional intelligence journey in town and just continuing to work on ourselves. How are you doing that now? How do I mostly keep working on myself? Yeah. It's a daily, it's daily. It's a daily practice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same conversation just happened before I came here. It's a, it's a daily practice to be a better person. Yeah. Daily. And it's hard. And sometimes do I get frustrated? Absolutely. But I don't give my power away. Yeah. I can't. It's not worth it. No. No. It's, giving it away to anger. Giving yeah, it no. away. Yeah. To, if you're giving it away like to you, I mean, you know the power game. If I get you, if you get me mad enough where I'm 
and you've never seen me mad, but I've already lost. I've given you all my power to when you when I give you control over my emotions. Yeah. And I'm not giving my power away. But no, it's a daily practice. It's a daily practice to shut up and listen instead of talking. You know, mm-hmm. God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. You know, we sit there and listen. And, you know, a great conversation I've had with my guys at work before is like when their wives start talking, like ask, hey, am I, do you want me just to listen or do you want me to help you? Mm-hmm. Because I know I'm an innate fixer. I want to fix it for you. But if you don't want me to fix it, and women, maybe try this. Hey, baby, I don't want you to fix this. I want you to listen for a second. And okay, we'll just sit there and listen. Right. And uh, yeah, being a better person is daily work. Yeah. And it takes you being the one to say what you need. Yes. And I think that that works. So there, there's so many things that work in our relationship or neither of us are perfect. So both of us knowing that, um, that works, but then us just being able to say where we're at and what we need, I think that works. Mm-hmm. Um, and that I know it's not your job to fix me. No. And like I tell people all the time that I didn't marry you to fix you. No, I married you exactly how you are for who you no. are. And I let you be who you are. And that works. Yeah, you're not going to be able to marry somebody to change them. No, you can't change them. Ain't going to happen. Love them for who Only they, they are. Only they can change them. That's right. Yep. Love them for who they are. Celebrate who they are. What do I do that works for you? What What do you like that I do to help you? Not your bags. Not your bags at the grocery store. Those things I cannot stand. <laughs> so <laughs> we need to explain that. <laughs> So she takes, <laughs> you had to surrender to that. Uh, so she had, you know, those reusable box bags you get at the grocery store or whatever. She uses those instead of the plastic bags because she's. Everybody uh, loves them, though. Oh, you got to clip them on. They take up so good. They don't fit right. It's, they're so easy. Oh, they're not. No. They're saving the planet. Uh-huh. My grocery bags. Mm-hmm. Okay. So not the bags, but not what else? Bags. What works? Hold on. What works? What What do I do for you that helps you? you do for me that helps me you're you i mean i can't pinpoint like what this is what you do that makes everything great no i for us is like we live off we not we live but we we know each other's strengths and each other's weaknesses and we're good at it like i always tell you at work you're the logistics officer of the house like you know you make everything work Mm -hmm. and then i do the physical side of it you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. no it's no we just know our strengths and weaknesses and we're not Hmm. We're not uh, biased or judgmental on the the weaknesses or the, or the strengths or whatever, or jealous of the strengths. It's we're a happy compromise, mm-hmm. and that it just works. Mm-hmm. And if it's not working, we can talk to each other. And say, hey, this ain't working. Yeah, yeah. If that answers the question. Yeah, I think that answers the I question. Feel like I'm in court. You are. I mean, you are in an interview. Yeah. Please. Are you sweating? Where were you the night yes. of? <laughs> Your honor. Your honor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's almost Valentine's Day. So you'll have an invitation to come back next year. We'll catch everybody up on what's going on with us. Oh. But, I, you know, in the essence of love and relationships, this is some of my most watched content is okay. talking about money and relationships and just relationships in general. general. And I am I called it real money because I want to take off the mask and have real open, honest, imperfect kind of conversations on the show. And I. I love you so much. And I think that you really are such a great role model for other men out there. As much as I can celebrate you, I will. And so having you on the show was, I didn't have a hidden agenda or anything. It was just more for, I want people to get to know you and us, because I think that's a part of the work that I do is to say, hey, like, we don't have it all figured out. No. We're not perfect. Nope. We have struggles. Yep. And there are some definite things in our second marriage that are that are working that it took that first marriage to figure out and all the things that we've learned and most importantly that i'm here for you with you and i love you and and i wouldn't even say unconditionally i think that term's overused but i love you for who you are i love you for who you are yeah and i'm not trying to change you or fix you or any of that you're just as fucked up as i am i know (laughs) and and for the, everybody's fucked up. Yeah. Some people just hide it better. 
I mean, that's it. Yep. Everybody's got issues. Everybody's fucked up. Some people just hide it better. We're all working on stuff. We're, we're all we're all work, working on stuff and going through stuff. Yep. So when you see that person, your wife, your husband, your significant other, whatever you want to be, your kids. Your brother. Your brother, your sister, your neighbor, your the guy at the 7-Eleven, the guy cutting you off. We're all going through shit. Yep. Don't be judgmental. Be there to love them. Yep. And my belief is we're all doing the best that we can do. We're doing the best we can do with what tools we have. Yep. Now people can go to get and learn more tools yep. to make yourself a better person. That's true. You can always put more tools in a toolbox. That's right. But yeah, everybody's going through shit. Everybody is. Yep. And be accepting of that and not judgmental. Mm-hmm. Only God judges. That's his job. That's his job. Not it's not my job. job. Yeah. Nope. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. No, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. No. I think that's a good way to close the show today. That's it? Do you want, do you want to talk some more? We can go a little bit more if you want to. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? I don't know. You, you got like the agenda here, not me. <laughs> that was all I had. I mean, I just, I wanted to have an honest, open, heartfelt conversation. Okay. And I, I am totally myself with you. So that helps me also just be myself. She dances when she eats, when she's happy. What she else do that. you want people to I do? Like uh, Winnie the Pooh in the honey pot? Yeah. I do. What else? I'm trying to think all that keeps. What else you like to dance in general. Mm-hmm. And you think you're really thug, like when hip hop comes on, and you're so not thug. But yeah, I'm trying to think anything else to keep stuff like that. <laughs> so thug. She loves watching the dogs eat lettuce. Yep. So like any like any animals eat actually. I, I do. I like watching us in, like those reels. Yeah. Any animal, pandas. Yes. Beavers. You no, know, she likes watching any animals. Eat. I do. It's so cute. Oh, well, you're so cute. Oh, thanks. You're babe. welcome. Anything oh, else thanks. you want to share? I don't know. Ask me questions. I'm here to get, I don't know. I think that's good. Okay. I think we hit the main points. I think that if if you or anyone watching this is struggling in any way, shape, or form, know that you're loved and that you're cared for. And we'll put in the show notes resources and things that are out there for you to be able to get support with whatever it is you're going through. I know for Jimmy and I, we found a lot of support through our church community, which I don't talk about a whole lot on the show. No. But that's where we reconnected, and that's, for me, was a huge turning point in my life to accept God back into my life, because I was raised in a Southern Baptist household, and I had distanced myself from pride and ego for a long time from God. And it was when I was, like I said, in that vulnerable time in my life, alone, going broke, lost, that I started going back to church and I was able to reconnect to realizing that I'm not alone. And that led me to you. So I do feel like God had a plan for us even. He kept bringing us closer and closer mm-hmm. and closer back together. And like little circumstances that we had discovered along the way as we were dating. And um, sometimes sometimes hard things have to happen. I think especially financially, there's a lot of people that get on their, uh, get in the rock bottom times of their lives financially and we can find purpose in that and that's where i found my purpose is just like raising my hand literally like you share that story in church mm-hmm. i had to raise my hand in church and say i surrender yeah i can't do this on my own anymore no that was huge for me yeah me too and you're not alone financially things can be so scary and isolating and i know that because i've been through it and in relationships, we can go through really hard things, but there are people out there that care and that will listen and that will help you. And ultimately, it is it is an inside job. You helped yourself first. Mm-hmm. You signed up for courses, but there were people there once you started talking to listen. Yeah. And don't be scared to ask for help. Mm-hmm. Don't and be that's scared. hard for men. I mean, I probably I shouldn't say men. I mean, probably everybody. I don't know. I'm not a female. I think it is hard for everyone. Right, don't be scared to ask for help. People yeah. are there to help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we don't, God doesn't leave you. you, you leave God. Right, right. So for all of those things, I'll say, and we can close the show with that, is that um, whatever you're going through, you can get through. Yep. Period. And we've been through a lot. Mm-hmm. We've been through a lot together. We've been through a lot on our own. And I'm just really grateful that you're my, you're my road dog. My, you're who? <laughs> You said it because I'm thug.
<laughs> your road dog? No. Uh, you're you're my best friend. Yes. You're my best friend. And I love you. And I'm grateful that we're on this journey together. Yeah, I am too, baby. And I love you too. Yeah. So we'll catch you next time on Real Money. Hopefully there were some things that we shared on the show today that were helpful and that you got little nuggets of wisdom and little nuggets. You can see why I love Jimmy so much. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back next episode with new conversation, new people, new topics. Let us know. Let us know what's resonating with you on this show and what other, what other guests I can bring on, other conversations you want to have. Please tune in next time. And thanks for joining us.